Okay, so I got to try to stay on time here. I, uh, well, I even made some notes, which isn't like me if anyone who knows, knows me at all. But uh, anyway, I wanted to thank you for letting me give this keynote speech. And yes, I did do this for the last 25 years, but I retired from Fish and Wildlife, Fish and Game, Fish and Wildlife uh, in January, and now I'm just a farmer. In fact, it's interesting, it's very hard, see, I'm going to go off script, so these <laughs> notes don't mean anything, but um, it was really hard to retire. It's just a great group of people we work with from squirt to art, you know, um, uh, Fish and Wildlife, the, the board, EPA, uh, good people, <clears throat> but um, it had to be done. And now I'm a farmer with 60 chickens and 10 dogs, rescue dogs, down in Panama. Focused in Florida, Panama, Inca Flora, if you ever want to come there. We have lots of uh, volunteers from all over the world that come and work on our permaculture. Someday soon, my wife's building facility is going to have aquaponics. If you don't know what that is, look it up. But we have a great agenda, <clears throat> perfect. First time I've never really worked or organized this agenda, so uh, thank you for putting that together. It was guilt, I was guilt ridden, you know, sitting in my office overlooking the Caribbean Ocean <laughs> with, uh, you know, all these nice things around and thinking that I wasn't contributing. It's, it's hard not to contribute, so thanks for, for doing that. So I'm going to have, so I put together a few slides, just a few slides, and if you notice, oh, no you didn't, let me see. So, oh yeah, thank you for the sponsors, I've known lots of them. Do you have new ones? Yeah, same old ones. Anyway, donuts, donuts are the most important thing for this meeting. But if you look, I had... Take it out. The dates? I had, anyway, I had, oh no, I didn't put the dates in. I had the dates of the 22nd and the 23rd. I was actually here ready to give this presentation yesterday. I forgot. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I just wanted to do a little bit about defining bioassessment. When I started this meeting, you know, 1994 on, is you know, we talk about putting bioassessment, I mean, putting biology into water quality regulation and monitoring. And so I want to give a little um, definition of bioassessment. These are um, slides that I brought from my training classes that I've been doing since 1996. Uh, a short history of the bioassessment. But then at the end, <clears throat> I want to read to you uh, something I had to uh, write. In fact, I, you know, I got a few awards over the years, and I really appreciate all the people that have recommended me for these awards. But in um, 19, um, or 2016, from SFS, Society for Freshwater Science, I got an Environmental Steward Award, and then they made me a fellow with a bunch of other fellows. And so we had a little writing assignment. So I want to read that to you, because I want to aim this presentation mainly to the students and the early career people from an old guy who's retired and just a farmer now, okay? So we'll see how it goes. So anyway, ecological integrity is what we're trying to measure with biosystems. That's, you know, and, and the chemical part of it has been around forever. The, in the very beginning, the State Board really didn't have the interest in putting biology. Now they did do some toxicity testing, which they considered you know, biology, but it was the EPA who came out in 1989 with the, you know, first guideline for bioassessment. And this comes from that, um, that book, and trying to put, you know, physical habitat and biology into it, which a lot of you already know. Also it comes from the Clean Water Act. Advice number one, who has not read the Clean Water Act? Or at least highlights of the Clean Water Act. If you're into water quality, if you're young, you're a student, try to read the different sections. Excellent sections. You'll hear about these different programs, but they come from the Clean Water Act. And it also says in section 101A that the primary purpose is to restore and maintain the chemical, physical, and biological integrity. So it's always been there to do it. It's just a harder thing to do. Um, this is the definition of biological integrity. 
the capability of a water body support to maintain a balanced, integrated, adaptive community of organisms. Now that's important, community of organisms, not a salmon or a single species. And um, also having a composition and diversity comparable of the natural habitat of a region. Well, how do you know about the natural habitats of any region in the United States without having a very strong reference program? You have to go out there and try to figure it. There are people that will tell you there's no such thing as reference conditions anymore, that they've just been disturbed too much. But you have to do it if you're going to try to measure the biological integrity. Now, the EPA would like us to do a multiple species monitoring. And we did this. You know, In fact, we followed EPA rules for quite a bit. Now, we did kind of drop the fish. Fish are kind of problematic in the West. But you know, bugs and algae are being measured by the state on board under the guidance of Fish and Wildlife, if you don't know that already. And that's what this meeting is about. Bugs are cool. In fact, I, it's going to be hard for me to give up unless I'm, I die, then I won't have a you know, decision to make. But it'd be hard to give up uh, teaching my uh, bioassessment classes. When I get the students in there looking at bugs and you know, producing metrics and getting into the whole thing is really cool. And so we'll see. So bugs are ubiquitous. They're everywhere. Fish aren't. There's some streams that shouldn't even have fish that do. Uh, anyway, so relatively stationary, meaning that you know they're not like a fish that can swim away and avoid. And then the biggest thing is that there's so many different species there. That diversity of species will give you a better spectrum of you know, stress in the stream. So that's why we do. So that's putting biology, why we want biology and water quality regulation and management. Um, the first agenda, 1994, there's a few people here that were on that agenda and still are. Larry Brown, I saw him, Dave Herbs. Um, we actually had work groups. That's why this, in case you didn't know why we call this the California uh, Bioassessment Work Group and why not just conference, is we did have work. So we worked through a lot of hard um, elements of putting a bioassessment program together. And all that stuff did come together over the years really well. Uh, it, and so, you know, we have the protocols. If you're not familiar, again, students or young career people that may not be in the bioassessment, there is a standardized protocol, very important to get bioassessment going in a state and all of this is on the Swamp website. How many people have explored the entire Swamp website and all the different elements and read all the different, ah, there you go. <laughs> but not, I still get emails, I still get emails today saying, you know, do you know if there's a, a CSCI score for a particular stream? Yeah, well, you know, I don't have, oh, where's my little pointer thing? Do we have a little, oh, I need one of those. If I go over, oh, it's your fault. <laughs> anyway, so, um, you know, all these different elements to go see, in fact, I don't have a phone, so I will move on. Uh, another aspect, you know, all the new new aspects, I mean, everything that's new that's coming out, especially the announcement of this, of this uh, meeting. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention to people, if you don't know the history, is that the EPA, Western Pilot Monitoring Program, which became the national streams and rivers assessment program is very important. Documents you should be reading. This is one of their latest documents. Um, sampling all over the place, like a thousand sites. Uh, the reference condition, again, all this, these documents are on the SWAMP website, so you newbies there, make sure and read it. Um, I took this out of a slide, that's another thing, all these slideshows are on that website. I took this out of the um, presentation that Rafi Mazor, Rafi Mazor did. And so here's one thing I wanted to point out with this slide, which came from his presentation, is there's your CSCI score. Some people are just concerned about that. Well, there is other information behind that. Like all these, these um, animals, or all these invertebrates, should be at this particular site, without getting too much detail. You can see there's a couple um, mayflies, but what happened to all these other mayflies? You know, questions like that, looking into the data. Uh, and again, all that data is right here on the website, so I want to make sure that you do that. 
So finally, to wrap it up in my three minutes, I think that'll work. Um, I, again, want to thank everyone who contributed for me getting these awards. And, um, and the Society of Freshwater Science, and again, they made us do a little reading, I mean, writing assignment. And what this was, was giving some advice to budding freshwater scientists. So I kind of want to read it because they published this all in a book with people, you know, much better than I am at, at the science. And I was just, you know, proud to be in it. But no one will read it. So I'm going to read to you what I wrote just to, uh, went through all the effort to do this. So anyway, um, my first SFS, or used to be called North, North American Benthological Society meeting, was in 1981 at Brigham Young University. Our aquatic entomology professor said that this was the closest they would get to California. So he loaded us up. I wanted to sing the uh, Beverly Hillbilly song at that point, but <laughs> loaded us up in his... Uh, Dodson Station Wagon, we headed to Utah. I was hoping to see some celebrities at the meeting, and I sure did. Having just seen their names in print, it was quite a thrill to see them in person. My two favorites were Ken Cummins and Jim Sedell. If you don't know who they are, the primary, um, ah, they're primary authors on what document? What publication? The River Continuum concept, which everyone should read. 1980, I think it was. Um, anyway, so there they were, sitting right in front of me in the plenary session, wearing tennis shorts and bouncing rackets off the palm of their hand. Besides realizing that a suit and tie is not required to tie or nabs, a seed was planted in my head, which is my first life lesson for you budding scientists. Don't take yourself too seriously and be real. Although I don't feel worthy of being in the same room as the rest of the fellows, I have never felt uncomfortable around them. By being open, real, and friendly with your peers, you will be giving them more than just your scientific accomplishments. Not all of you will become freshwater science celebrities or teach at a prestigious university like me. Some of you will be working for the government agencies or find a job with private firms. Working for the government or as a consultant can be ethically challenging. Uh, and I wrote this, you know, like in 19, 2016, so it's proven. Anyway, I'm not going to go into that. So working for the government or as a consultant can be challenging, although, um, <clears throat> and not what we envisioned while in school. I've worked through several administrations and their policies on environmental issues, and they did not always conform with mine. I survive, and so can you, by adhering to the following rule. Never forget to produce the best science you can. Report only what the science supports and stay true to your convictions. Another reality of working for the government is that you won't always get recognized for what you do. You have to learn to pat yourself on the back. And I've always, I remember telling people that, you know, worked for me over the years, if you have to do that, because you're not always going to get it. But then I said, well, Jesus, they gave me these awards, so I guess I am getting a pat on the back. Anyway, um, the last message I want to give to young SFS scientists is one I recently formulated after ta uh, talking to a friend of mine who actually goes pot, and uh, I guess I can say that now because he's in Santa Barbara. He, he comes to uh, Bocas. He's not a scientist, but very interested in the coming age of robotics. He was telling me how so many jobs people do now will be uh, performed by robots someday. We know that technology advancing in freshwater science. Soon eDNA will be replacing taxonomy. Predictive models will be determining the health of streams and drones will be conducting stream surveys. Some of this is already happening and you should embrace it and help advance technologies in ways that will advance our knowledge of freshwater systems. However, I worry that your connection to the ecosystem you study, help to protect, and I mean, let me do that again. However, I worry that your connection to the ecosystem you study and help to protect will be lost if you don't spend some time away from the front of the computer. I would encourage you, this is my last advice, I would encourage you to participate in some of those outdated scientific techniques. Spend some time looking through the microscope. Uh, Look at some biological metrics, not just the CSCI score, like I was trying to say, look into it. And um, 
metrics and tax and taxonomy. I mean, tax the list. You know, again, you get your CSCI score, you look at the metric, look at the tax list, and take some time to get wet and dirty. So I kind of stumbled through that. But that's it. Thank you. Another thing, give a presentation, definitely prepare and be on time. <laughs>